baby face. He wants baby face. Oh. Oh, I don't blame him. Anything I've got. Of course, I haven't got anything, but you can have all of it. Thanks. 
Oh, buddy. You remember the dreams I used to have about the folly? Yeah. <laughs> well, I guess they were only dreams. Pete, why don't you try to get in again? I've been thrown out of there too many times now. The only way they let me stay inside is to have the joint quarantine. <laughs> The first time was all right. Well, maybe you're right about that, kid. Yeah. No more for me. Yeah, it's tough Look at kids. Yeah. We're going to have another outing. Okay, oh, that's great. swell. Okay. When is it, gee? We'll give them to you, Mr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Come on, dear, let's, let's sneak away on the lake, shall we? Yeah. Oh, come on. heads off to that old pretzel. Mm-hmm. I see. I don't know. When you're close to me like this, you... You just burn me up. I guess that's the same kind of funny feeling I get, buddy. If we could only be like this, always. Then I'd come home to you every night. And you'd be waiting there. Oh, I would, would I? Any old time I stay home all day waiting for a man. Yeah, but lots of girls do, dear. Now, buddy, you've been reading your fairy tales again. And the little princess waited for her little prince charming. No, darling. Not for little Gloria. I want to go places and do things before I settle down and raise a lot of little passengers for the subway. Oh, buddy. Let's sing your new song. How does it go? 
When lucky fire... Wait, wait, I know. When lucky fire... Oh, just a band. What do we care? Miss Matt Hot, come on, let's go back and dance. Oh, no, George, it's well here. Come on, big boy, stop the engine. Say, I bet you, Nicola, I can kiss you without touching you. All right, I bet you. Well, Smarty, you lost. I know it. I owe you a nickel. Buddy, come on, just be.
kiss me, did you, kid? Say, I didn't mean that. Forgive me this time, will you? Just this time, honey. part right where it starts, uh, well... Oh, I think it's great. Just that way. Yeah, what do you know about it? Oh, I know the things that I like. And one of them is your song. Nobody's singing here? Where's Gloria? Why, uh, she had a bad toothache and had to go to the doctor's. I, I mean, the dentist. Oh, uh, Barbara. Yes, sir. Where's, uh, Gloria today? Uh, <laughs> well, Morning. She had to go to the funeral this afternoon. Well, she can go to her own funeral now. I'm sick of these girls walking in and out of this place as they please. And when she comes in, tell her not to hang around for a check. We'll mail it to her. Gee, buddy, did you hear what he said? I was afraid this was going to happen to Gloria. I knew she was spending too much time with that Miller guy. Nakabona, 6100. Sheet music. Hello, buddy. Gee, buddy, brace yourself. I've got some great news for you. We've just been booked for 20 weeks. Gee, Barbara, they made it. Oh, great. Yeah. This is the greatest news of all. 
We leave tonight at 8 o'clock for the west. Yeah. Yes. Gee, buddy, aren't you happy? And you're the first person I've told. I've got to run and pack now, dear. Hurry over as soon as you can. I'll be there. Goodbye. Golly, that's wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. You've got to get that piano player out of your mind. He never did anything for you. What of it? Well, now, Gloria, for instance, take Mr. Miller. He's no... Yeah, good. you take him. Well, if it weren't for him, you'd still be getting your head off down at Heimer's. Am I any better off now, eating a lot of greasy food, one cheap hotel after another, playing five a day? Well, you make a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of it I get. <laughs> well, of course, you don't spend it foolishly. I'm saving it for you. Yeah, I know. Not a thanks I get after all I've done for you. Didn't I raise you, sleep for you, and work my fingers to the bone? Yeah, I know that old story too. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, Mom. I appreciate 
everything you've done for me. I'll try my best to forget, buddy. Oh, Gloria, darling. Hmm. You always were a good, good girl. I've got to go to the drugstore before it closes. Hurry now, dear, because you only have a few minutes. Good evening, Mr. Miller. Oh, hello, Mrs. Hughes. I'm on my way to the drugstore. Can I get you some more corn plasters? No, thanks, Mother. I've got enough to last me another thousand miles. <laughs> 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 That old dame gets in my hair. A boost is better than a knock. Well, Smarty, you can just put yourself right out of here. Now, now, good, you. Don't do that. I'll make you like my kisses, you little devil. <laughs> now you get out of here and get off quick before I stop throwing things. And let me tell you something, baby. I can get another Mooney for this act overnight. And if you're going to get fresh with me, you'll find yourself back in the alley where I found you. Hey, gorgeous. Come here. Oh, how do you do? You're Mr. Miller, aren't you? You said it, baby. I'd like to have a little talk with you. Won't you come into my office? What's the matter? Did you and Miller have a fight? I just heard him talking to another girl about taking your place. Friends! She's in there now. You must have done something to things up. What are we going to do if he kicks you out? Oh, I'm sorry, Ma, but that's not part of our act. Come around here, Miss. All right. Here, help me up quick, will you? Hello, hello. Mr. Miller, you're on. Yes, how am I doing? Not bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have just about enough money to get us back to New York. And if you ever open your mouth again, I'll put my foot in it. All right. Put on your patent leather and make your way to where 
about Gloria, but I'm sure I can fix everything. Oh, you can, can you? Yes. Well, there's nothing to fix. Oh, Danny. Danny. Did you know Shop was outside? You mean Stanley Shop and Big Bell? Yeah. Oh, boy, Stanley, eh? I guess Ziggy sent him on to get me the sign for next season. He thinks because I'm playing this time, he can get me for coffee and cake money. Well, he'll lay it on the line, too, baby. This is Miller speaking. Oh, hello, Mr. Sharp. I'm Miller, you know. Miller, Miller and Mooney. Yeah, I just caught you. Oh, yeah? How'd you like it, eh? Pretty good, huh? Yeah. By the way, uh, how about Mooney? Oh, money? We can get together on that all right, Mr. Sharp. How are you hooked up? Oh, you know. I manage to put away a little something every week. Nah, nah, old man, you got me wrong. I mean the girl, Mooney, your partner. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I see. You mean... Oh, we're hooked up all right. You know, partners. Oh, kid's a little new yet. I think with a little more work, I'll make a pan out all right. Where is the girl? I'd like to have a chat with her. Oh, uh... She had a duck right after the performance, Mr. Sharp. Dancing for one of those big parties. Didn't even have time to change her costume. Too bad. I'd like to have seen her. Oh, I, I, I'll tell her you call. I'll bring her around to see you, Mr. Scott. I suppose you're at the Blackstone. Oh, no trouble. I, I'll get in touch with her oh, later. Oh, no trouble, Mr. Scott. Hey, I'm tickled to death to do it for this year. Well, all right. You're all right, Danny. Make him put it on the dotted line. Let him know it's Miller speaking. Ah, <laughs> uh, that was just Sharp's way of trying to beat me down. Gloria, 
Oh, now, Gloria, why do you always pick on me? Oh, oh Miss Ed Miller, you don't understand, Gloria. She was only playing with you, not picking on you. Weren't you, Gloria? Uh-huh. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear that. For a while, she had me fooled. You know, Mrs. Hughes, Gloria and I just had a little spat. Oh, oh, Mr. Miller, that isn't anything. Everybody has a spat now and then. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's what I was thinking of, Mrs. Hughes. In order to protect Gloria in the future, in case these little spats should occur again, I was thinking we ought to have an agreement. You know, a, a partnership. Oh, Mr. Miller. I just think that's lovely of you to have Gloria's interest at heart. And I certainly think that a contract would be fine for both of you. Don't you think so, Gloria? Yes. But why this sudden change? A little while ago, you wanted to kick me out on my ear. Oh, gee whiz, Gloria. Couldn't you see I was only fooling? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I knew it all the time. But I don't want to sign any agreement. Oh, Gloria. Don't you see that Mr. Miller's just doing it for your good? Oh, well, if Gloria feels that way about it, I wouldn't want her to sign. <laughs> oh, uh, Mr. Miller, uh, just a minute, please. I knew it. That's the way I've worked and played for you. And what do you do? I never think of your poor mother. <laughs> All right, Ma. I'll sign. You know, Gloria, after all it's you I'm thinking of, I work darn hard teaching you my routine. All right. If it's going to be a partnership, we'll make everything 50-50. 50-50? 50-50. Oh, Gloria. I work just as hard as you do, and I want half of everything. Nothing doing. No contract. Oh, well. What's the difference? That's okay. Well, here's the gag. It is mutually agreed that we are equal partners in the team of Miller and Mooney and will split all earnings, mm -hmm. billings, mm -hmm. etc. 50, 50. For a period of five years. Five years? Why, of course, Gloria. Certainly. Right. From the above date. Like this would have happened. Ain't it awful? 
just makes me sick. Mohammed, no. Let's ankle out of here. All right. Remember how Mike used to throw Barbara and us out of the New Amsterdam? <laughs> Those things make cold shivers run up my back. Yeah, they give me the creeps, too. Where were we? Oh, we were talking about Barbara. Can you imagine us running off and leaving her? Why? What do you mean? Was she down there to meet me? Yeah. Oh, by the end. Still, I guess she'll get home all right. Got that in all right? Okay. Girl. 
Are you afflicted with housemaid's knee? Raise your legs on that kick. You work like a lot of rheumatics. All right, come on, let's try it again. What do you mean by running away and leaving me? Oh, Mother, I'm so excited. I couldn't wait for you. Hello, Mrs. Hughes. How are you? Oh, it's funny. I suppose you're still down at Hymer's store. Yes, I am. I hope so. Stay there. Look at the old gray-haired guy out there. That's Pop Morgan, the director. What is the matter with you today? Why, you're positively stupid. Why don't you listen to me? All right, we'll do it again. Now, I said to this guy, yes, I said. Oh, you didn't. I didn't, huh? He can't get away with that stuff with me. My God, my feet are killing me. Come on, girl. Step it up. Come on. Boost yourself to your own. Uh. Say, I'm not going to stick around here all day. I think I'll tell that bird who I am. Yes, go ahead. Give me a little pep talk. Come on. about my song. Your song? Yeah. Gee, buddy, give me a chance to get myself set first, will you? Well, you needn't get sore about it. All right, Charlie, here's the first number. Hot seat. Play an eight-bar introduction and two chords. And don't forget the eight-bar tag. Oh, yes. And listen, build up the finish, will you? Okay, what I mean, make it good and hot, you know? Okay. Nice and heavy. Let's go. <laughs> Let's have the last chorus. Oh, wait a minute. Say, ain't you going to give me a chance to show you my single? I don't want to see your single. Listen, I'll knock right, him dead. I'll knock him dead, I tell you. I'll knock him dead. I'll knock you dead if you don't stop yelling at me. What's the matter, Mr. Dollar? I'm sorry. But if Pop Morgan doesn't like you, that's all. 
guy knows as much about dancing as I know about building a bridge. Mother, I made it. Oh, I'm so proud of you, honey. Oh, Danny, I'm awfully sorry. So that's Miller and Mooney. Huh. They can't kid me. That's Mama and Papa. Really too bad, Mr. Miller. And after all, you've done for Gloria. Hey, don't worry about me. I'm not worried. Remember, we're still partners. Still partners? Certainly. Don't you remember that little agreement? For five years? Five years? Mm-hmm. And we split everything 50-50. 50-50? Mm-hmm. You know, that was your idea, Gloria. And I've been big-hearted agreed. Now all I have to worry about is your future. Now you see the mess we're in. Well, I guess it's all my fault. Buddy, aren't you going to congratulate me? Of course I do. My buddy. What's the matter? Nothing. Well, uh, you'll be busy, and I guess I'll go along. No, don't go. Yes, I. I think I'd better. Goodbye, Gloria.
Good evening, buddy. Good evening, I've been trying to get you for hours. And then I guess I dozed off and the piano woke me up. I'm awfully sorry, Miss Schultz, but I didn't realize it was so late. Oh, take that. But I've got some bad news for you. Bad news? Barbara's seriously hurt. She's in the emergency ward at Bellevue Hospital. What? And she's calling for you. I guess you better rush right on over. Oh, uh, telephone the New Amsterdam Theater and tell Miss Hughes about it. Miss Hughes? Yes. All right, son, I'll phone. How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Norman Brokenshire with the Columbia Broadcasting System. Tonight we're broadcasting the gala opening of Florence Rigfell's greatest show, Glorifying the American Girl. Oh, I wish you could be here with us tonight. Every big name in town is here. There he is. There he is, Florence Rigfell. Get a good look. He's with his wife, Billy Burke. There's Noah Berry. Oh, he's hiding behind the whiskers. Uh, here comes Adolf Zucker, the president of Paramount Pictures. Oh, oh, here's another marvelous writer, Ring Lardner. You know him, Al. Here comes, here comes a big shot. Here comes a big shot. A banker, philanthropist, art patron. I want you to see Otto Kahn. Oh, and here's, here's Texas Guyman. Here's Texas Guyman. But tonight, she's in supper. She's paying $25 for it. Oh, and here comes, here comes Mrs. Walker and her husband, Mayor Jimmy Walker. Hurry up, Jimmy. Hurry up, Jimmy. You'll be late again.
put well, it over. Well, Chloe, this is a big night, and I know you'll put it over. Oh, I hope so. I predict a great success for you, Gloria. You have nothing to fear. I want to thank you, Mr. Morgan. You've been so kind and considerate. Oh, I do appreciate you. it. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Good luck, Gloria. Thank you. Good luck, Gloria. Thank you, Mr. Stanton. Oh, darling, you've been so wonderful. Good luck, Gloria. Good luck. Yes, Gloria. Don't be scared now. You'll make good. I was frightened a little, too, when I first came with Zickville, but I'm over it now. Besides, they're a great audience. I've got all my relatives out there, and a few Gentiles, too. I'll go after it, kid. You'll make good. Thank you, Eddie. Ah, 
Oh, there you are, my boy. You've got the finest suit of clothes in the whole place, I'm telling you. Wait, wait, no, 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 no. Don't trace your arm. I'm asking you, please, don't trace your arm. You've got the finest suit in the whole place. A uh, mole? Uh, mole? And you got that package wrapped up yet? Go ahead, kill me. Go ahead, kill me. Hey, uh, my dear man, I want to tell you something. That's the best suit of clothes we got in the whole house. You won't be able to wear that suit out. You'll be ashamed. I'm you telling you. You've got the finest suit of clothes in the whole place. Oh, don't listen to him. He's a damn fool. Go ahead. But I'm you telling you, I've got the finest suit in the whole place. So Come in again. Come, Come in again. Come in again. Goodbye. Uh, Mo, What's listen that? to me, Mo. Don't you tell anyone that I am a damn fool. Don't you ever tell anyone that I am a damn fool. I didn't know it was a secret. Oh, hello, my friend. How are you? Glad to see you again. Come on right in. How are you, my little wedding? What can I do for you? I make a nice, classy suit. A nice, classy suit, exactly. Uh, college boy style. College boy style. Suits you perfectly. Uh, would you mind coming upstairs, walking up to our clothing department? You see, uh, our elevator just broke down. Not at all. And I want to let you in on something very secret. We have just received a shipment of goods that was supposed to go to the Kottenheimer Company. Uh -huh. Now, you know the Kottenheimer Company. The best clothes in the whole world. Now, I'm going to show you some style. Some style, some, some material, some cuts that you will be surprised. Well, here we are in the clothing department. Say, you've got quite a building here. Huh? I should say so. I want to tell you something, my dear man. That's the best suit of clothes we got in the whole What's the matter with you? What's the matter with you? What's the matter? It's the man's own suit. Go ahead, kill me. Go ahead. I think of your hat and coat, my friend. Make it look perfectly at home. That's the idea. Let me see. You're taking about uh, 46 stops. Now, I've got for you here something very beautiful. Here is a lovely golf suit. A very handsome English walking suit, the latest cut. Comes right straight from the picket building. That's oh, lovely. Look at those shoulders. Beautiful. How that fits Wonderful. Take a walk around. See how you feel on the suit. Just move around. Easy. There's a nail sticking me in the back. That's not a nail. That's our own invention. You know how you go into a restaurant, you hang up your umbrella and your hat, and you get indigestion, you think somebody's going to steal it? This is our own invention. When you take this, you can take your umbrella and your hat and you hang it up, and nobody can steal it from you. Take a walk. Take a walk. How does it feel now? It's all right, but I don't eat in a restaurant. Look. Eat in your Aunt Sarah's house. Eat in cafe. I don't care where you eat, but you'll take the suit. I'll tell you what to do. Are you a sport? Yes. Do you play casino? You take the suit, and we'll send you home in a taxi cab, all right? Call him a taxi cab, all right? I want a belt in the back. But, oh, I'll fix you. You're going to get a belt. And here is something very lovely. Here is a very lovely sex suit. Here is a suit that the, only the gentlemen and the whole people in the Yes, of course, the buttons don't need, but I don't think they've ever been introduced. Don't tell jokes. You see what this suit is? It's the latest Palm Beach model. All the people is going to wear two button sack suits this season. No, I like the one button. One button? We're here to please you, my dear man. That's all that you are. How do you like that? <laughs> too tight for me. Too tight. That's all you got to do is to tell me. Turn around. Go ahead. Right. Now, take a walk. How does that feel? It's all right, but a little cold in the back. Cool. That's what you call the cooling system. That's the new fridge you there. With a suit like this, you couldn't get hot under the collar. You see what I mean? You like the suit? He likes it. He'll take it, you'll take it. He'll take it, he'll take it, he'll take the suit. All right? I want a belt in the back. All right. Listen, did anybody see you come in? That's all I wanted to know. Listen, I have for you a very pretty smoking jacket. I think you would like this. Every gentleman bears a, a smoking jacket yeah, like this. Too big for me. Too big? All right, more alteration. What do you mean alteration? Oh, where? Once alteration. But where do you need alteration? Need that fits him like a kimono. What's the matter with you? Look at that. Look at that. What's the matter with you? Look at that. Look at, don't you know what it is? That saves you from buying mittens in the wintertime. Can't you see that? We're saving you money? No, I like to have it fixed up. You want it fixed up? So I'll fix it up. So I'll fix it up. What have we got to do? All right. Take this down. Raise the shoulders. Raise the shoulders. About six inches. Six inches. Fix the lapel. Fix the lapel. The two lapel. Both lapel. Give him a cut here. A cut here. Give him a gash here. A gash on the left. And give him a slice here. Right in the middle of the slice. Above the appendix. On top of the appendix. Right. I, I haven't got appendix. Have you got tonsils? What are you telling me what you got there? Let's take suits here. You want patch pockets? You want patch pockets? Pockets. You want patch? Patch, patch pockets. Pocket. You want patch? Yeah, uh, patch, patch. Pocket. You want patch? patch give him patch. patch. All right. You'll get patch. patch. You'll get patch. Give him patch there. Patch pockets. Well, how do you like that? How much is it? Uh, take a uh, look at the tag there. T.O.T. Uh, 26.50. <laughs> That's too much. 26.50? 26.50. <laughs> Let me explain to you. 
This suit cost us a long wholesale. Twenty-four dollars. We are paying rent here a year, ten hundred and seventy-five dollars. It cost us for gas and for electricity every month, thirty-five dollars. We are paying the police protection. They shouldn't break the windows, twenty-five dollars. Last winter, my wife was sick. What did it cost me? $370? I'll charge you $15. Here, add it up. What could be making profit on a suit like that? Say, maybe I don't have to have it fixed. That's what I'm telling you. You don't have to have it fixed. He's intelligent. I could tell by his hair. Oh. Of course you don't have to have it fixed. You know why you don't have to have it fixed? Because you don't have to have it fixed. Huh? Some joke. <laughs> you like it? You'll take it. You'll... I, 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 I... Listen. Say belt and I'll kill you. I'm telling you. Well, I, I like a blue shirt, sir. Oh, oh. All right, we're here to be All right. If you want a blue shirt suit, here you are. Here is a nice blue shirt suit for you. Blue shirt? Yes, sir. That's what you call pale navy blue. Pale navy. Blue. Pale navy. <laughs> Looks like banana color to me. Do you want the suit or do you want vegetable? What are you looking for? You want, it's too light for me. Too, you want a duck? A dark blue double-breasted suit. He knows what he wants. Here's a dark blue double-breasted suit for you. Huh? Some uh, the best Look at that. Store. That's what you call two and one. Two and one. It's a suit and an overcoat combined. You like a suit like this? Well, I like a blue shirt with a white stripe. With a white. Oh, with a stripe. With a stripe. Say what you want. There you are. How do you like that? <laughs> I look like a zebra. Don't talk like a jackass. What is a zebra? A sport model jackass. You know, it's nothing. You like the suit? My dear man, you look ten years younger to me. You're just a kid. I wish I had a balloon to give you. I'll tell you something. You're a different man. Your own friends wouldn't recognize you in that suit. Your own mother couldn't recognize you now in that suit. Really? Take a look in the light. Go on, Clyde. Take a look at the material. That's what you're going to do. That's all right. I like You know what I like about this is strong material. Yes, sir? I always like yes, sir? strong clothes. What, uh... What can I do for you? I just tried the suit on. You see, even I didn't recognize you. How do you like that? I want a belt for that. You want a belt? Please, stop a minute. Don't be so sad. Here, look. Here, take that. Look, I've got for you here a very beautiful hunting suit. Oh, there. there is what I call a hunting suit. The finest hunting suit that I have ever seen a in this place. Suit. A hunting suit? Yes, a hunting suit. What do you call it a hunting suit for? We've been hunting for the pants for two years. Now, wait a minute. Here is a hat that goes with that suit. How do you like that hat? Good? Yeah, it's too big for me. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. What's too big about it? I'm telling you, for two years, you could wear that hat. Take a walk. For two years, my dear man, you could wear that hat. Yeah, but my hand will get tired. You change your hand. You change your hand. You've got to tell them everything. Well, how do you like it? Well, I'll take the hat. And the coat. No. And the coat. No. Uh, listen, they've been together for two years. Why should you separate the hat and the coat? No, I'll take the hat, but I want to look in the mirror. <laughs> Why should you look in the mirror and get discouraged? Can't you take my word for it? Would he lie to you? We're not in business for that. Well, how do you like that? Well, my dear, let me tell you something. When you're wearing a suit like that, you will be the talk of the town. I'm telling you. You could go to a baseball game, and you start up, and you get up, and you holler, Hooray for Babe Ruthie! Knock a home run! And the people are staring around and say, who is that fresh man? And they see you and say, ah, he's not fresh. He's wearing a Copenhagen of course. You see what I mean? You go to a dance at night. You're coming up to a woman and say, pardon me, could I have the next waltz with you, if you please? And she says, he's too short. Ah, but he's a Copenheimer. So if you wear a Copenheimer clothes, you can't go wrong. I'll tell you something. In, in Washington, in the inauguration, what do you think Coolidge is saying to Hoover? I want a baton hat. Listen, let's be honest with you. If you want that suit with a belt in the back, you'll have to make it order. That's right? Yes. Uh, how much is it? Well, you're a short man. You take about two and a half yards. Sixty-five dollars. That's too much. Now, wait a minute. We'll come to times. Wait a minute. Would you go to fifty to fifty? No, sir. Would you spend forty-five dollars? No. Now listen, I'm telling you, a suit we're going to sell you. You wouldn't get out of here without a suit. That you know. That you know, don't you? You want to save ten dollars? Yes. You want to save ten dollars? Walk upstairs. No. Come along. That's all you got to do? We'll be here to please yes. you. We want to take care of you. I'll go more. Take the gentleman's measure. Come up here and I'll take your measure. The next. He is 25. 25 in the neck. And the Adam's apple is seven and a half. Seven and a half in the Adam's apple. 
in the shoulders, the steady one. Steady one in the shoulders. What are you singing? Get up there. Get up there. What are you singing? Come on, come on. Oh, your quartet. Who's the quartet? What quartet? Take, take down the pants. What? No, listen, I mean take down in the book the pants. The pants. Yes, sir. The pants is 61. Pants is 61. Wait you're measuring your own pants from here. Are you telling me, listen, I'm the tailor. Do I tell you how to milk your cows? You do as I say. You want two sleeves? You want two sleeves? Yeah, I think. Give him two sleeves. Two sleeves. Give him two, two sleeves. Two sleeves. Sir. The sleeves is 19. Looks to me like 16 there, I'm Mom. telling you it's 19. Well, I'm telling you it's 16. Why are you telling me? I'm telling you. Why should you tell me? Am I going to tell us? Wait a minute. Hey, hey. Come back here. 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 I don't need your business. Go ahead. All go right, ahead. Man, go. Look, you can't take a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be here tomorrow. All right. You come here tomorrow and you'll try on the suit. Huh? No, I'm coming here to get it. In one day you expect to get a suit. In one day you expect to get a suit made to order. It's advertised 24 hour service. For pressing, for pressing, for pressing, for pressing, I'm telling you. In one day he wants to get us. What's your hurry? Well, I'm going to Boston by boat. By boat? A sailor suit. Uh, Wait a minute. I got a suit. Wait a minute now. There you are. How do you like that? Good. How, how much is it? Nineteen fifty. Will you take it? I'll take anything to get out of here. Now wait a minute. Wait a minute. A batting ball goes with every sailor suit. got a wish. She's certain you'd glorified tonight. You look pretty glorified yourself, honey. Not glorified, but happy. Hmm. Oh, God.